What's up, everybody? Welcome to Live Fridays on Thursday with the Traveling Tennis Coach. Um, I'm wearing a hat today for the first time ever as I haven't had a haircut or a shave in over two months, but we're gonna roll with it. We're gonna have some fun with it. Um, in the next couple of minutes, I'm gonna welcome in Ashley Leahy. She is the number one player of, in all of college women's tennis, a tremendous player, a great person, and I look forward to interviewing her shortly. Um, as always, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the section below, and I will be welcoming, welcoming her in here shortly. <laughs> <laughs> a tough number three <laughs> yeah right we, we got it together we're all we got good. It together yeah no all good thanks so much for your time and uh yeah, for, sure. on for a quick interview um you said you're in where are you located i thought you were out west um, i'm so. in boulder colorado yeah oh okay okay yeah so you're, so you're back home yes okay yep. okay yep. very cool very cool so I won't take too much of your time and I'll just dive right into it. Um, I started Live Fridays and even though it's Live Friday and we're doing it on Thursday, I started yeah. a platform um, to engage with players and coaches from all over the world, but also to kind of humanize them as well and give you know my followers an inside look at some amazing people with, with great stories. And I thought you as a player and just looking at some of your matches or seeing some of your matches and uh, reading up on you would be a good person to uh, interview. Cool. Thank you. Yeah. So I'll dive right into it. I don't know exactly how you got into tennis, but I'm curious to know what's your backstory on why you started playing tennis? Um, it was just kind of, I, I played a lot of sports growing up. I played soccer. I played tennis, um, basketball. I water skied. I snow skied. I just, I did kind of everything. So uh, tennis ended up being the one that I became the most competitive at and played the most and yeah. kind of had uh, more of a talent for. And so we ended up just choosing that as the one to pursue. And my parents were very supportive throughout the whole process. Like if I wanted to take it to the next level, they, um, they let me do that, you know, and it was a lot of resources and everything, but it wasn't like my parents were like, she's going to be a tennis player. It was yeah. more just, um, this is, this sport seems to be the one that's sticking. And then, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And you said it was the sport that was sticking with you. Did you know, like, hey, I want to be very good at this sport? Or was it just something you played as a hobby and all of a sudden you became very yeah. good at it and you started to take it seriously? I think, I mean, I've been taking it seriously since as long as I can remember. I think okay. I decided I wanted to be a pro player when I was six. So, okay. So, yeah, yeah, since you can remember then, right? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And it's really cool because I just recently, like, just moved back into my childhood home and wow. started playing with all the kids in the neighborhood. Like I've been hitting out there in the mornings. I'm still training and everything. And there's a lot of good players out here. And some of the kids were watching and I was like, do you guys want lessons? And so I've started this little group and I'm teaching a bunch of little kids, little um, five to 10 year olds who are just so excited to start playing. And it's honestly the coolest thing in the world because I have all these pictures of me out at the very same courts when I was like five. And wow. yeah, it's just like this deja vu feeling. And I'm just like, oh, I want them to be good too. It's such a great sport. I want, yeah, it's, I want them to get into it. So. And do they know who you, do they know who you are and all that yeah. stuff? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, they do. So they... The parents, I think, have a better idea of like what, um, what it means to, you know, be a, a top player and all that. But they also have seen me hit. And um, so that's really exciting for them too, to see like, wow, like tennis can be really cool, you know? Yeah, absolutely. No, that's super cool because me personally, I, I teach, I coach, I do interviews. And so just seeing the smile on kids' faces, like oh, it's it so sticks awesome. with you for so long, right? They look up to you. They think you're like Michael Jordan or something like that. And it's, yeah. it's, really, uh, it's a really good feeling. Um, one thing that I was thinking about and just going back to your college season, I know you're in the middle of your senior season, correct? And all of a sudden, it's like one day you're playing, the next day you're on lockdown. Like, how was that for you? It was really sad. Honestly, the whole process was so abrupt. Like, 
the very beginning of it of the week we had um this monday wednesday class and it was actually taught by the dean of our school wow. and so on monday he was like there's no way we're going online we're a small school like we can manage this but you know at some point like the the government and county and all that makes decisions that they don't have control over but right. I'm, they're like we're gonna do whatever we can we're gonna stay in school you know we're gonna keep the sports going and then on tuesday all this all of the school got canceled went online and then um and then like on wednesday all sports got canceled so on tuesday i was like okay i mean it's gonna be really sad like all my friends a lot of my friends are gonna leave but i still have my teammates we're still gonna be here having a season yeah. and then like we're walking out to practice it was a really like dark gloomy day and then you know we, we get this message like the ivy leagues canceled their their uh season it's like that's not a good sign yeah. and then the sec and then whatever all the all the conferences canceled and it was just like it was just such a bummer because you know I, I really felt like i was just loving it my teammates and i were on a roll we were we were getting better every day and and just was such a like hit the wall kind of stop it wasn't a gradual like ease yeah. off of it you know so yeah i can only imagine and i was just thinking like some sports like basketball right you're making that last push to go to the ncaa right. the final four whatever but for you you can correct me if i'm wrong you get another season right yeah they gave eligibility back to the people who got shut down mid-season so so you're going you're going back for a yeah. senior season with the same team that you had before yes i i plan on it unfortunately things you know look really grim with all fall sports getting canceled and yeah just like everything kind of just seems um but if there is a season uh in the spring i will be there with my teammates like trying right. to make up for what we lost so yeah yeah, no, for sure. And I think everybody's waiting. As a world, I think we need some sort of normalcy and we look to sports to, to find that, you know, right. common ground, normal balance of, of life. Um, but from a training perspective, how's that been? I feel like I've chatted with the, the head coach in Notre Dame and she was telling me just how, you know, things are changing. And from a player perspective, like, how have you been able to, to still train and stay motivated? and also innovate, right? Because you don't necessarily have all the same things you're used to. Right. No, that's a great question. Honestly, um, it usually by the end of season, I'm completely exhausted. Yeah. Um, but, you know, we didn't finish the season, so it ended up being okay. Because then sometimes you, I don't take enough of a break between season and then going and starting, like, playing some tour events over the summer before I go back in the fall. And... Um, this time, I mean, I finished like a, it was like three, four months of, of hard training. And then I kind of just was like, well, what am I going to train for after everything ended? So yeah. I got to take some good time off, like spend time with family, um, you know, just do other things, like learn a new instrument, practice other languages, like yeah, just kind of be a, be a person with other, um, with other interests and stuff. And, um, and then once I got back on court, I was I was really enjoying it and, and excited to play again. And then um, and then everything has kind of fallen into place this summer in terms of training. Like if uh, there's a bunch of other people who either just moved this summer, and um, one of my uh, friends from childhood who went to USC and had a, was a was a really good college player as well is in town, and we've been hitting almost every day. And nice. With their, um d1 college boys out here who i've been playing with and um it's honestly been great training so to be home um normally the the tennis in boulder i've i haven't been able to find like um a lot of great people to hit with but this summer it's been pretty amazing so i've just been blessed to be able to to stay home and stay safe and also get in good training and, and all that and just stay in shape in case things, you know, open up and, and change yeah. and also enjoy tennis. Yeah. And it's almost like this, this notion of like, stay ready. So you won't have to get ready. Although yeah. we don't know what's exactly. going to happen in the next month or two months or even a year. Right. You're just right. trying to continue to, you know, prepare yourself and stay ready. So when the lights come always, back on, you're ready. I can always like up the training a couple of weeks before I play. For sure. Um, but, but if I just completely let myself get, completely out of shape out of out of playing then it's a lot harder to get back into it so i just want to stay out there and and keep practicing and, and i do really enjoy it so it's yeah. not like a sacrifice it's just something i get to start my morning with and then yeah 
That's good. Cool. No, that's super cool. And then as you think about your your team, and I know there's obviously individuals, there's team competition, you know, have you ever thought like, hey, um, I want to finish and, and win a full NCAA title, both team, yeah. double singles, like what's your, you know, going into your senior year, what are we going into your senior year? What's your goal? I really, I mean, I really hope there is a season because I think winning it with the team that we have would just be such a special experience. I love my teammates. We have the best times together. And I really think that we, we have the team chemistry to go all the way. And I, I thought that we did last year um, to make at least a good run and, and give ourselves a shot at it. And um, yeah. that, would, that would be the ultimate goal. Yeah. And you mentioned team chemistry. And I think it's like a lot about putting those puzzle pieces in place. And then, you know, one bad puzzle piece, it could be, you know, obviously it doesn't fit and it could hurt the team. But it seems like you guys have a good, you know, from coaches to trainers to just everybody. It's just a well oiled machine that fits really good together. Yeah, exactly. No, I, I really felt that with our whole team, just we, we got along great. We were best friends on and off the court and really just wanted the best for each other. We'd go out and fight for each other on game day and yeah. never happened go yeah. together afterward or go to the beach together or whatever it was it was awesome those are special people to keep in mind. yeah <laughs> uh two more questions for you so at some point college will end right um yeah. what does the future look like after college for you what are some of your goals to play? um if you don't mind sharing <laughs> oh yeah no um, I'm currently studying for the MCAT, which is the medical, um, like the LSAT equivalent for going to medical school. Um, I'm planning on taking that end of, um, end of September and applying in the spring and then holding my application as long as I, if once you get in, you can hold it for a few years. So I, I plan on, I'm trying to get into a good school. Um, and then playing pro tennis for a few years. And then if that's going great, I'll, I'll keep playing. If it's, if it's not going well, um, I really do feel called to be a, a doctor at some point. I, I love science and I love, um, I love being around kids and, and helping people. So I hope that someday I can, um, I can use my, my skills of, you know, tennis and then also, um, science and, and passion for that kind of stuff as well and, and different careers. So I think that's really cool one, because you're kind of thinking ahead. You know, your passion is both this and wanting to be a doctor and you're putting plans in place so that you can pivot or go either pathway. And I think a lot of people are, uh, you know, one track, one track mind. And my sister is a doctor as well. But, um, she was, a, she was a, yeah, she's OBGYN. Oh, that's so cool. But she was like, she was an athlete, you know, she was never going to Michigan State. And then, you know, she did the, the medical school and found her calling and her passion. So, um, yeah, kudos to you for that. Thanks. Yeah. One more question for you. So what's, I always like to ask something funny, but what's, uh, what's one thing that no one knows about you? Like most people wouldn't know about you if, I mean, obviously maybe if they're in the locker room or something, um, for example, people <laughs> told me that like pros have told me they love people watching or um, they love to cook or they're a terrible cook or they don't do this. What's that one thing that, you know, people don't know about you? I don't know. I mean, <laughs> it's a yeah. hard one. There's, I, I don't know. I feel like I'm a pretty open person. Oh, my friends just, my friends all pretty know, pretty much know everything about me. I guess that could be my thing. <laughs> or any uh, secret or hidden talents or anything like that. Hidden talents. Um, I don't know. I mean, I'm learning guitar. Like I can, I can whip out a few cool songs on the piano. I'm a terrible singer. No one wants to hear me sing, but I love um I love music and I love uh, learning new instruments and stuff. And yeah, uh, I don't know. I, I I need to have a have an answer ready for that because that's one that gets asked like a lot in in interviews and stuff. And I always just kind of come up empty. And I'll think of something later, but then I don't write it down. <laughs> but you know what? I think you can stick with the guitar. 
I uh, I love the guitar. I probably played for a few years, and then I broke my guitar. Maybe oh. this is like eight years ago. I never come back around to playing guitar. So oh, yeah. Yeah, I I've been I just started, and my fingers get so blistered. Yeah. <laughs> Badly. I'm I'm much more natural at the piano. My dad just sold the piano, so yeah. I'm not about that, but. Um, but I, I love piano. That's that's much comes much more naturally to me. Yeah, that's funny. That works. Well, those are all the questions I had. Again, thank you so much for jumping on um, so quickly. I know I gave you short notice, but I appreciate oh, the fact so that you're the time zone difference. No, it's all good. No worries. There's always a time difference with people. So don't worry about it. And I'm glad we got a chance to talk. I wish you the best in your senior season. Um, I look forward to seeing you win all those titles and awards and also someday down the road, seeing you become a doctor. Yeah, I hope so. Yeah. Thanks. All right. Talk to you soon. Bye. Bye.